Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and doing great. In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to a PLC simulator that can be used with TIA portal and can be used to simulate any PLC from Siemens. The name of this simulator is Smatic 7 PLC Sim and you can get this simulator directly from the website of Siemens. If you have installed any version of TIA portal, then you can download corresponding version of PLC simulator as well. So without any further delay, let's open the TIA portal and create a project over there. So I'm already over here. I'm going to click on create a project. Click on create to create. In this overview, you can go to configure a device or you can go to write PLC program. Currently, I'm going to go over here and over here, I'm going to add a new device. From the controllers, you can select any controller you want because later on the simulator is going to simulate that controller. So let's suppose I'm going to select this one, which I've already selected in the previous videos as well. So this is the PLC and I'm going to add it. So the PLC has been added and we can start its programming. But before we start the programming, I would like to introduce you to these PLC tags. It is often a good programming practice to label all the inputs and outputs before starting the ladder diagram or function block diagrams. By label, I mean you can assign the names to all the inputs and outputs that you are going to use in your program. So in that way, you can easily call those inputs or outputs by using their names or tags. There is a default tag table inside this PLC tags. You can double click on it. Then over here, you can add the tags. For example, I'm going to add input A. So this will be my first input. You can see that it has already been assigned the data type, which is Boolean and the address, which is the first input address. If you want to change this address or assign it some other address, you can click on this drop down menu. And from here, you can select, for example, Q for the outputs and M is for internal bits. So currently I am going to use I and then the address and the bit number. So it is the word number zero and bit number zero as well. So you can change those things over here. So for the next input, I'm going to use another input. I'm naming it as input B and it will be automatically assigned the next available input address. After that, I need an output, for example, output A. And now this time, I don't want it to be an input address. I want it to be an output. So I'm going to go over here, select Q and address zero. And the very first bit is bit number zero. So this is the first output. And for the second output, I'm going to go with out B and then it continues from where I left in the previous output. So it assigns the next ad output address to out B variable. Okay, so we now we have created these tags and now I can only use input A, input B, out A and out B to call these addresses. I don't need to assign any other thing. So now we can go to the programming block. So I'm going to this programming block section and inside this main, I'm going to program my letter diagram. I can adjust some things over here because I don't need these things. So to expand my view, I'm adjusting the view over here. So now over here, I can program my letter diagram. So for the first input, I'm going to use this switch and let us program a latching device over here. For example, when I press a push button A, which is input A, output A latches. So for that, I need an input over here. Then this second input can be input B that can be used to unlatch that first output. So I have the input So over here. I just need to write input A. It automatically gives me the tags available. So I can select this input A. Then I can move to input B and to output A as well. After this, I need a parallel branch. And over here, this would be my out A so that it latches. And then I'm going to close the branch. Okay, we can expand this program a bit more or we can just leave it over here. So for the time being, I'm leaving it over here so that we can quickly move to the simulator part. So once your program is done, you can compile it to see if there are some errors or not. So there are no errors uh, and you can see it in the window over here. Okay, so now our program is good to go and now I can start the simulation. So you can click on start simulation and if you have installed the simulator, it will automatically start that. You just need to click OK over here and yes over here. This will take a bit to start the PLC simulator. So as soon as the simulator will run, this download to device window will open up automatically. And you can see over here this time, PLC sim has already been selected and you cannot change the selection. So just, just need to click on start search to search for the PLC that is attached to the simulator. So the PLC which is shown over here has been found by the TIA portal. And now you can select it and just load so that the program is loaded into the PLC. 
So everything is fine and I can click on this load again. So the downloading has completed without an error. You can see it over here. And after I click finish, I want my PLC to start. So I can click on start module and then finish. So you can see over here in the simulator window that the PLC one, which is my CPU, which I selected earlier is written over here and the PLC is now in the run mode. So currently the simulator is running the PLC, but it doesn't know that what kind of variables and what things I have used in the program. So for that, I need to provide a link to this simulator to my project. And for that, you can click on this project view button over here. So in this project view of the simulator, I need to create a new project by clicking on this new project button. You can name it as you like, click create. So once the project has been created, you can see sim tables over here. Click on them and double click on this sim table one. These are simulation tables that can contain all the variables which you have created in your program. In the simulation table, you can right click over here in the first row and click on load project tags. Now this is the advantage of the tags which we have created over there. We can directly load all the tags over here. You can see that all the tags have been loaded. Now to simulate these variables, simulation is already running, but in the PLC over here, we are not monitoring this program. So I'm coming over here and click on this monitor on. So monitoring is now on and you can see that the power is coming in these rails, but it is not going forward. I can change the layout a bit so that I can see the simulator and the program in the same window. Okay, so now I can see input A, input B and out A. So if I turn on input A, you can see that in the monitoring window, input A has turned on and because of that, output A has turned on. And over here, this output A switch is also on. I can turn off input A and still output A is lashed because of this branch. Now to turn output A off, I need to turn on input B that has been used as a normally closed switch. I can turn on input B and you can see that output A has automatically turned off. And over here, you can also see that output A has turned off. So input A, if on and B off, then output A is on. And to turn off output A, I need input B. So that's it, dear learners, for this video. I hope you have understood how to use PLC SIM Smatic 7 software to simulate any PLC from Siemens. Now you can program different PLC programs in your uh, TIA portal and then use this simulator to test your programs without having the need for a physical PLC hardware. So if you have any questions, I'm always available through YouTube comments or my email address. To the next time, thank you and take care.